and welcome to Chapter 5 of Glamador's DFO Sprite Editing Tutorial Video Series. Today we'll be talking about swapping avatar and weapon files as well as using untrimmed sprites in Photoshop to better organize your coordinate placement. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Photoshop like so, and then bring in one of the sprites I've prepared. Fans of Full Metal Alchemist may recognize this as the Winry avatar set that was released in either Korea or Japan or China, I don't know which but it was a tie-in with the Full Metal Alchemist movie that's being released over there. Probably Arad Sankey, now I think about it. But you'll notice that the sprite, as we have it here, is untrimmed. Now that means that it has this big box going all the way around it. And the box is of uniform size for every layer. So you can see the animation plays out just as you would want it to without you needing to actually adjust anything. Now, this is extremely important because when we open up the extractor here and pick out the NPK for character, mage, equipment, avatar, skin, pick out the first one. Eee, naked mage! Shield your eyes! We can replace some of these files with these files here. Go ahead and do that for each of them. Through frame 9. Now I'm committing a cardinal sin for the sake of speed here by not clicking that 32. Don't emulate my example. Always click the 32. losing track of which ones I am on. Six. Seven. Ah! This is so tedious. Nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. All done. Now let's go ahead and put all these at the same place so we can see them a little bit better. There she is, little Winry. But the thing you'll notice here is that now this entire walk cycle is completely satisfactorily s sequenced without having to edit the coordinates at all. All of them bear the exact same coordinates because all of them have the exact same size sprite. There's this little invisible box. You can see whenever I entered it, my mouse disappears for a second there big invisible box. Now all of her animations here, here they all are, unnamed and unorganized, and they all bear this large box all around them as you can see in the thumbnails. Now what this means is that the anchor point in the upper left hand corner here is going to be identical for every frame, which means that the only movement is within that invisible box. It sort of makes its own invisible framework so that we don't have to do any coordinate placement. All of the coordinate editing can be done in Photoshop. And if you allow me to open up Photoshop again here, you can see that if we wanted to edit a few of these to have different placement, I can just hold control and nudge the sprite pixel by pixel using the arrow keys. And as long as it stays within this box, 
every frame is contained within this box, you're able to manipulate and move your sprite however you like in Photoshop, save it much more quickly than you could in the DNF extractor, and you can make it look smooth without ever having to touch the coordinate or texture coordinate window at all. Never have to touch it. You just need to type it in once, modify all frames, and done. So, for those of you that like less clicking and more nudging, there she goes. Then you can just use this. Now, I don't know if it's as easy to do this sort of thing in Paint.net, but in Photoshop, it is much, much more um, time efficient to do it in Photoshop than in the extractor. However, it does take up more space per file having all of this white space surrounding the character because you'll notice every time we replace one of these we drive the size of the sprite way up. You can see it jumped from a 5.0 to a 5.14 and that's just awful. But any way you cut it, it is less work and with the fact that we can rename things with the two nowadays it's no problem at all. But anyways, that's not what I brought you here for. Today is all about avatar swapping. And that takes place almost exclusively in the DNF extractor. Now, we've already got avatar skin up here, but let's try something else. Let's look at a coat, because you can easily see it. Here is the mage coat, and teen mage coat. Oh, ha <laughs> uh, Censored bikinis. Uh, fun. Anywho, this is the default mage coat. You can check the animation frame. Put it in the upper corner there. That's what it looks like. You know it, you love it, it's adorable. But say you don't like it so much. Say you wanted to make your default look something else. Maybe you want to make it look... Uh, like this. Three... That's the same thing. Well, it doesn't matter. It shows the principle. And it has the same number of layers, which is important. So you have A, B, and C next to the layers here. You need to make it so that you have the same or fewer uh, layer letters, because otherwise you won't have the right levels to your layer in-game. Say, sometimes the shirt is supposed to be over the pants and under the shoes, or over the hat, or under the wings that you have equipped. It, it Each of those A, B, and C is a level of depth that the sprite has in relation to other avatar files. So A, B, and C indicate whether it's on top, middle, or bottom. And that's important to know because sometimes when you're dashing or something your torso may overlap with your top. So to do something simple we're just going to take this same one. It's a recolored default sprite top so it's very easy to mess with. However, you'll notice since we're in the light client that it has some minor alterations, like not existing past frame 80. <laughs> now that's all thanks to the Nexon Light Client. They did that specifically so you would have to load much less from your computer, reducing CPU cycles, even though it takes up more bandwidth. I don't approve of the system. I think it's silly. But the most important part of the system that they don't tell you about is that inside each of these little image files here is an invisible marker, which tells the game to stop looking for resources in this file right here and instead ping the Nexon servers. And the way you get around that is to use a sprite from a previous pre-light client version of DFO or a foreign version of DFO which doesn't have the light client. Now I just so happen to have, I'll open it up in a second extractor here, a whole host of DNF files from around April over here on my desktop. So I can go over here into DNF image packs and I've organized these by character class so it's easier for me to find what I'm looking for and I can get the avatar and there is 3A and if we scroll down past 80 
you'll see that it's all still there in Korea, unlike in North America's DFO. So what we're going to do here is we're going to save this file in my test folder along with its two other layers, 3A, 3B, and 3C. There we go, all done. Now we're going to go back over here, find coat 0, that's the default coat, and simply replace it with 3A, B, and C. Now, since this is just replacing a mage avatar file with another mage avatar file, all of the coordinates are going to be in their proper position already. So you don't have to do any coordinate replacing when swapping avatar and weapon files. That's the beauty of it. As long as you're swapping from slayer to slayer or mage to mage. If you try and give a slayer some sort of priest weapon, then you're going to have to do quite a lot more work, and I'm not going to show that on video. But for now, you can see that this coat is properly replaced. And strangely enough, it took up even less space than before. So we can go ahead and fill that, and we're done. But we're not quite done yet. Now, by using the KDNF models, or sprites, we don't have that invisible marker over here stuck inside the NPK, which is extremely useful, but doesn't quite fix the problem. The second step in the process, after using a foreign source to replace our avatar file, is to go into your Nexon folder, and this time, Image Packs 3. You'll see in here there's a whole bunch of things resource with a various numbered labels. Now, we want to go ahead and just delete all of those. Now the way those things work is they're a little text file that DFO reads and recognizes based on the markers in the avatar NPKs telling it where to look for the avatars. Now until the little thing pings and writes a new line in your resource file, it's going to continue to look in the NPK instead of to Nexon servers. So by deleting that resource file, we've gotten rid of the little line of code that says, hey, look to the Nexon server. And since this no longer has the little invisible marker, it's not going to know to ping the Nexon servers anymore. So that's the second step in the process, and now we're done. But that was too easy. Let's say we want to use a coat that has fewer layers than that, like this one, 101A. You'll notice that 101 does not have a B or a C or a D. It's only got the 1 the little, uh, I don't know, halter top thingamajig. Anyways, if we wanted to use that for something, we would just save it, as usual, wherever we like, and then pop back up here to coat 0000A. Now, A usually is the topmost sprite. This is what is going to show up all the time on top, and that's what we want. Uh, the top, the coat to go over everything. So we go ahead and replace with coat 101A. But now we still have B and C, these other little pesky things that show up above and below other layers. So we're going to go ahead and hide those because we don't want them to show up anymore. And now we can fill or not. If we want to rename it to 2 and make a copy, then we don't have to refill this. But since I haven't done a 2 yet, I have to fill it up to size. Otherwise, DFO will overwrite it when we start up the game. Now I've replaced this coat twice, both of the times with KDNF image files. If we use a DFO image file, it's not going to work. I can't stress this enough. But Say we didn't want to replace something with fewer layers into something with more. Say we wanted to use one of these that has more to replace something down here, like 00100. It only has an A, but coat 0001 has three, A, B, and C. So what are we supposed to do to make that work? Well, the short answer is it's never going to work exactly right. You're always going to have some graphical glitches in game. If you try and use a top or any other avatar that has more than one layer of depth onto one that has 
fewer layers of depth. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what that's going to look like by popping over here into the KDNF files, always the KDNF files. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to merge these just like we did in Chapter 4. I'm going to select which files to merge and merge them together. And we're going to do that twice. One merging A and B and the other merging B and C. And now you'll see the mage coat is in its complete state and animated the entire way around. But notice how you get all these little graphical glitches? That's because these sprites were never meant to be merged like they are. And you'll notice that all of these linked layers that you're seeing, those weren't a problem for coat 001A. You'll notice that all the linked layers here are in different positions than the linked layers here. And that's important to take notice of. And what that's going to do for you is you can s get around that by choosing which ones you merge in which order. Oh, huh. hiccup. So say we want to merge in a different order this time. We're going to have B on top and A on bottom. Now you'll notice that it has taken on the linked layer properties of A rather than the linked layer properties of B. And what that means is that we're going to have far fewer of those little graphical glitches. So see, it's important to mess around with the layer ordering and make sure that you know which one's going to go on top and which one's going to go on bottom. Now see, that looks a lot better than our first attempt, doesn't it? No nasty graphical glitches. However, since this character's sprite has sleeves and other things and little coattails that uh, overlap with the pants in some sprites, it's not going to look right when you try and put it over here on coat 100A. But you can still try. If you can live with the graphical glitches that have to do with layer depth, then you can absolutely do this. It's completely your discretion. Same as before, once you've merged them, you save it in an external place as an image and then replace. There it is. And there we go. Now you'll notice though that this one, 0100A, was a tiny file to begin with. And this is actually three files all merged into one. So when you try and replace that, it is undoubtedly going to drive the file size up. Now, if you don't use the two method, then you're going to have to find some avatar file somewhere. I don't think we even have this one in our version. And we just go ahead and hide, hide them. Ones that we don't care about. Ones that we're never going to see and never care if we do. And we just keep on hiding all of them until that number up there becomes blue, like that. Fill. Now we've replaced the default with this little blue thing, and the little blue thing with one of the alternate color defaults. Now, the same exact methodology applies to weapon files. If we want to go in here and that's, that's the DNFs. Go down here into the Mage Equipment Weapon, uh, say Pole. And there's our poles. Now we got to go back into C, Nexon, DFO, Image Packs, and find the same corresponding sprite package in DFO, Weapon Pole. Okay, now here, these suffer from the same thing. Look at all these linked layers here as we scroll down. These sprites are being told, invisibly, to go and search for them on the Nexon servers. So we go ahead and we find the one we want to replace, doesn't matter which one. You save it, make sure to save all layers of it in your test folder, come back over here, replace it with whichever one you saved, wherever, and it'll work. But remember, every time you do this, 
you have to go over here and delete your resource files because if you've been using the DFO version of the sprites up until the point that you swapped them there will be a line in the research fi resource file which is telling it to look to the Nexon server so every time you do one of these things you have to delete the resource file exactly once now you shouldn't have to do it more than once you will sometimes run into graphical glitches in which you should try deleting it a second time just in case sometimes it'll swap back and forth depending on where you are in town on your screen and that's just a byproduct of the light client you really can't avoid it and it's really annoying but if you delete the resource file it usually works don't quote me on that but it usually works and really, that's all there is to say about avatar and weapon swapping. There's not a whole lot else to go on. It's not a terribly complicated process, but it doesn't always work, and that makes it frustrating. But while I've got your attention, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how to do something else. grenades. Now, a couple of videos ago I told you guys I was going to tell you how to center frames. As you already know, the way DFO does its coordinate plane is to have its coordinates anchored in the upper left hand corner. So what we're going to do here is center the sprites so that their origin is one on top of the other and to do this you're gonna need a calculator or if you're good enough at mental math you won't anyways you take note of the coordinates as they are now this one's zero zero so that's gonna be our base for centering we're gonna center all of the other ones around this sprite and the other thing to take note of is this width and height measurement the, the DNF extractor tells you the width and height in pixels of each of these frames now you'll notice that this one has the same width but a different height. Now the difference between these heights is 8. That's good because it's an even number. Now what we do is we cut that even number in half and then add or subtract based on whether it's higher or lower to compensate for the difference in sprite height. So we take this 0, 0 and we go ahead and make that the same across all files because that's going to be our base point point. and from 0 0 we're going to want to subtract from the Y four frames oh, four pixels I'm sorry or maybe we're going to add four frames confusing. Yeah, it was add. Okay. So there were fewer ones we had to add. This one is a smaller sprite. And this one is smaller still. It is two frames smaller, so we're going to have to add five. This one is actually different in the X coordinate as well, but it only differs by one pixel, so it's impossible to center it any more than it already is but it is different by more than one pixel in the Y coordinate. So we're going to add 5 to this. And this one the same thing. This was an easy example and I did that on purpose. But now you'll notice that the sprites are centered around the same center point. Whereas before they were anchored to the upper left hand corner and they all had different sprites different coordinates. And that's all I have to teach you for this video. It's uh, maybe a little bit simpler than the others, didn't go over as many things, but avatar and weapon swapping is something that a lot of people have asked for, and while I think it's, it's really a trivial matter, and I don't like to do it because you pay for those, and by swapping your avatars and weapons, you're sort of cheating yourself out of part of the game and I don't like to do it but if you like to do it now you know how and I am not responsible for your actions 
Next time, we'll be learning about complex recolorations, one of my favorite things to do, and batching and scripts in Photoshop CS5 so that you can do your complex recoloration with the least amount of work possible. So look forward to that.